Hi guys, welcome to St Malaya's Family Worship. It's so great that you've joined us. If you don't know me, my name's Jack and I'm a DY student at St Paul's. So we have so much fun for today. We've got uh, the last thing of our parables, the last story, and we're going to see Ruffy, Colin and Zuma and sing some songs. But it's coming to the end of half term now, isn't it? Which sometimes can feel a bit sad or you can feel a bit apprehensive about going back to school. So, shall we pray before we worship that we feel safe about going back to school? Okay. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't feel scared about starting school again and, yeah, that you just be with us. And as we worship you, we'll be able to give all our fears and worries to you. Amen. All right, guys, shall we worship God? <laughs> Stories of the Bible, the parable of the two sons. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like walking on water 
Oh, hey guys. And even raised people from the dead. Uh, Wahoo! Jesus was in the temple in Jerusalem teaching when the Pharisees and religious leaders came up to him. <laughs> they challenged his authority, and Jesus said, What do you think about this? A man with two sons told the older boy, Hey, son! Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. Eh. The son answered, No, I won't go. But later he changed his mind and went anyway. Then the father told the other son, Hey, son! You go. And he said, Yes, sir, I will. But he didn't go. Then Jesus asked, which of the two obeyed his father? They replied, the first. Then Jesus explained his meaning in telling this story. Jesus told them that people who sinned would get into the kingdom of God before they did. This is because the Pharisees and religious leaders didn't believe the people who God sent to tell his message. Jesus continued to talk to the Pharisees and religious leaders. They realized he was telling the story against them and they wanted to arrest him. But they were afraid of the crowds because the crowds listened to Jesus and believed that the message he was speaking was from God. Okay, well, that was an interesting saddleback. I don't know about you, but the first time I saw it, I was like, what is this story about? It is so confusing. But don't worry, I'm here to try and clear up a bit of it, hopefully. This is actually the last parable in our series on parables. How crazy is that? Because it's coming to the end of the school term. Okay, um, this got me thinking. When I was a little kid and I used to get asked to do loads and loads of things by my parents, it felt like all the time they were asking me to do the dishwasher, to help with washing up, sweep the floors, make your bed, tidy your room, all the time. And I was like, come on, stop asking me to do all this stuff. And you know what? Once, I really, really wanted my own pet. And we had Tommy the cat. He was like our family cat. He was so nice. And they told me, if you feed him every day and look after him really well, then maybe you can have your own cat because then we'll know you're responsible. So I said, yeah, I'll do that anytime. I want my own cat. So I said I'd look after him. But I'm quite forgetful. I don't know about you, but I forget to do stuff all the time. And... There were quite a few days where I just forgot to feed him. Not because I was being mean, but I just forgot. And my mum would come to me at the start of the day and she'd be like, Jack, Tommy's bowl's empty. You need to feed him. And I'd be like, okay, I'll do it later. I'm just playing with my toys. And then it would get to after school and she'd be like, Jack, Tommy's still hungry. You haven't fed him. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it after dinner. And I forgot and forgot and forgot. And you know what? It's a little bit similar to our story that we watched on Saddleback today. There were two sons. One of the sons said, yes, I'll go do it. I'll go help you in the fields, dad. And he just sat there and he didn't do it. Then there was the second son. He was sat watching TV in our saddleback, wasn't he? And he said, no, nah, I'm not going to help you. I'm just going to do what I want. But then he had what's called a change of heart where he changed his mind and he was like, actually, it'd be a good idea if I came and helped you. And Jesus was saying, that what we've got to do is make sure that the things we do, so our actions, match our words, what we say. So if I told you guys that I was going to buy you each a Cadbury's Easter egg, even though it's not Easter, but I didn't buy it, that wouldn't be good. So Jesus is saying, let's make sure our actions match our words, okay? And to remind us of this, I have two yellow circles and a black pen. And you probably have no idea what I'm going to do. But what I'm going to do is draw a B. All right. And we're going to see why this makes sense in a minute. OK, here's B stripes. There you go. He's going to have some little eyes. There we go. And let's draw some wings on him or her. There we go. OK, so there is my B. And what I'm going to write on the back of my B is obedient because what we want to be doing is being obedient, all right? So B 
bit of a funny word because B is spelt different, but I want you guys to remember we can be obedient, all right? So if you want to make your own B, then you can remember to be obedient and make sure that your actions match your words. Okay, guys, that's the end of our parables. I hope you've enjoyed the series. Okay, boys and girls, we are going to be doing a really exciting prayer activity today. And these are called chatterbox prayers. Now, some of you at home might know how to make these already, but don't worry if not, because we're going to take it step by step. And there'll also be instructions online for you to follow too. So what you're going to need is a piece of A4 paper, a pen, and some colouring pencils or crayons or anything that you can colour with. Okay, so step one, what we're going to do is take our piece of A4 paper and we're going to take one corner and we're going to fold it down to create a triangle like this. So now you should have something that looks like this and you can open up again. And then, actually, we're going to close it. We're going to fold this bit here. Now you can do this with scissors or you can... If you want to do proper origami, you don't use scissors. You can just fold it and rip it off. So you just have to score it like this. We'll do it a few times. And hopefully it should just rip off. There we go. So we don't need this anymore. So now we have our piece of square paper. So to continue, we're going to do some more folding. So what you need to do now is, it's like this, we're going to open it back up, and we're going to fold it the other way. And then you can open it back up again. So you should have folded lines, like two creases like that. So you should see four triangles on your, pe on your square. Now, each corner, one, two, three, four, we're going to fold inwards to the middle of those four lines. If you're younger and you're finding this hard, you might need an adult to help you with this, but that's okay. Okay, mine's not perfectly square, but that's okay. Don't worry, these don't have to be perfect. Okay, so now you should have something that looks like this. Now we're going to turn it over the other side. And again, we've got folded cross shape here, and that helps us to fold. So again, we're going to take our middle, our two, our four edges and fold them into the middle again. Don't worry if this is taking you longer than it is me. You can pause the video at any point. Perfect. So now you should have something that looks like this, four flaps like that. So we're going to turn it over and fold it in half. This bit's a little bit tricky. And then you've got some edges here. So you want to kind of wiggle your fingers in like that and then wiggle them in this way too. And then you're going to push. Oh no. Like that. So you have your chatterbox here now. And we're going to use this to pray with. So following on, we're going to, we're going to put it back down uh, like this. And with your coloured pencils, I want you to colour. You can, if you haven't got coloured pencils, you can write the colour. But I'm going to do blue, yellow, green and red. Inside like that. And then on the inside, you are going to write one to eight, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't worry, again, if you have to pause the video at any point, don't worry. And there's also instructions on the screen to help you. Now, this is where the prayers come in. I want you to think of four different things to pray for. These can be family, friends, school teachers, um, poverty in the world, world um, politics, things like that, that we're going to pray for. So I'm going to write my family. I'm going to put my friends. I'm going to put 
um, those with sickness. And then I'm going to put um, those living in poverty. So your chat box is pretty much finished now if you've done that. And again, we're going to go back to making it into a chat box. We just have to wiggle our fingers in. Sometimes it's a bit tricky with paper. <laughs> there we go. And how we're going to do this, this is quite fun to do with someone else. So for example, I'm going to do blue. B-L-U-E. And then I'm going to pick number six. And then you lift it up. You can do this with a friend or a family member. And it says here, those living in poverty. So we're going to pray for those people now. Father God, I pray for everyone in the world that lives with hunger and poverty, those that don't have enough money. Lord, I pray that you would be the God who provides. Would you look after those people and look after children as well in those situations? Amen. Well, guys, have fun making your chatterboxes and let's see some. If you want to show us, take a photo and that should be really great fun. Bye. All right, guys, so it is memory verse time. And because we are learning about obedience, our new memory verse comes from John 14, 23. Okay, I'll read it out and then we're going to try and memorize it. All right. So it goes, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. John 14, 23. All right. So we're going to rub out a few of these. If you've got like a chalkboard at home or even a whiteboard, you can follow along. You can pause the video. All right, so we're going to rub out a few words. We're going to rub out who and John. All right, let's try that. Okay, anyone who loves me will obey my... Can you shout out what was that one? Teaching, that's it. John 14, 23. Okay, great. Now we're going to rub out quite a few. We're getting rid of me, obey, teaching, and all the numbers. Oh, they're all gone. Right, we've only got few words left. All right, shout out as I do it. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. John 14, 23. Right, we're going to get rid of it until it's just will. Okay, all we're left with is will. And that's the last word we've got. Let's see if we can remember it. Okay, here we go. All right, shout out. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. John 14, 23. Okay, guys, so maybe you can memorize that in a different way, but we look forward to hearing if you've memorized it in groups. Lord, you have my heart And I will search for yours Jesus, take my life And lead me on Lord, you have my heart and I will search for yours Let me be to you a sacrifice And I will praise you, Lord And I will sing of love come down
Okay, guys, so it's coming to the end of our time together. Uh, we're sad, but we get to see you soon, and you get to start school this week and see all your friends again. So I hope you're looking forward to that, and maybe we'll get to see some of you guys in person next week. All right, enjoy school, guys. Bye.